14.1.1 Mammalian Nervous System Structure and Role of the Mammalian Nervous System The human nervous system consists of the Central Nervous System, CNS, the brain and the spinal cord Peripheral Nervous System, PNS, all of the nerves in the body It allows us to Make sense of our surroundings and respond to them Coordinate and regulate body functions Information is sent through the nervous system as nerve impulses electrical signals that pass along nerve cells known as neurons. A bundle of neurons is known as a nerve. The human nervous system. 14.1.2 types of neurons. Neuron diagrams. There are three main types of neuron, sensory, relay and motor. Sensory neurons carry impulses from sense organs to the CNS, brain or spinal cord. Relay neurons are found inside the CNS and connect sensory and motor neurons. Motor neurons carry impulses from the CNS to effectors, muscles or glands. Neurons have a long fiber, axon. This means that less time is wasted transferring the impulse from one cell to another. The axon is insulated by a fatty sheath with small uninsulated sections along it, called nodes. This means that the electrical impulse does not travel down the whole axon, but jumps from one node to the next. Their cell body contains many extensions called dendrites. This means they can connect to many other neurons and receive impulses from them, forming a network for easy communication. Identifying the types of neuron. The three types of neuron. Sensory neurons are long and have a cell body branching off the middle of the axon. Relay neurons are short and have a small cell body at one end with many dendrites branching off it. Motor neurons are long and have a large cell body at one end with long dendrites branching off it. Exam tip. A way to remember which neuron is which. Sensory neurons connect a sense organ EGI, nose, taste buds to the CNS. Motor neurons result in a response, which is often movement, think of a moving motorbike. 14.1.3 The reflex arc. The reflex arc. Voluntary responses. A voluntary response is one where you make a conscious decision to carry out a particular action therefore it starts with your brain. An example is reaching out to pick up a cup of coffee. An involuntary, or reflex, response does not involve the brain as the coordinator of the reaction and you are not aware you have completed it until after you have carried it out. Involuntary actions are usually ones which are essential to basic survival and are rapid, whereas voluntary responses often take longer as we consider what the consequences might be before doing it. Reflex responses. An involuntary, or reflex, response does not involve the brain as the coordinator of the reaction and you are not aware you have completed it until after you have carried it out. This is an automatic and rapid response to a stimulus such as touching something sharp or hot. As it does not involve the brain, a reflex response is quicker than any other type of nervous response. This helps to minimize the damage to the body. A reflex. The pin, the stimulus, is detected by a pain, pressure, touch receptor in the skin. Sensory neurons sense electrical impulses to the spinal cord, the coordinator. Electrical impulse is passed on to relay neuron in the spinal cord. Relay neuron connects to motor neuron and passes the impulse on. Motor neuron carries impulse to a muscle in the leg, the effector. The muscle will contract and pull the foot up and away from the sharp object, the response. The reflex pathway, synapses, where two neurons meet or join, they do so at a junction called a synapse. Synapses allow junctions between neurons so are important in the nervous system being a connected network of neurons. Nerve impulses can transmit across synapses and be directed along the appropriate R. Route by them e.g. to the correct part of the brain. Think about the analogy of railway points that guide the trains onto the appropriate tracks based on the train's destination. Exam tip. Reflex actions are automatic, fast, protective. A common exam question is to be asked to draw arrows on the neurons in the reflex arc diagram to show the direction of movement of the impulse. Make sure you read questions carefully. Not all questions have a line underneath them to write an answer, so they can be easy to miss. 14.1.4 The synapse. Structure of a synapse, extended. The junction between two neurons is known as a synapse. A synapse. Synapses and neurotransmitters, extended. Neurons never touch each other. 
the junctions, gaps, in between them are called synapses. The electrical impulse travels along the first axon. This triggers the nerve ending of the presynaptic neuron to release chemical messengers called neurotransmitters from vesicles which fuse with the presynaptic membrane. The neurotransmitters diffuse across the synaptic gap, or cleft, and bind with receptor molecules on the membrane of the second neuron, known as the postsynaptic membrane. This stimulates the second neuron to generate an electrical impulse that travels down the second axon. The neurotransmitters are then destroyed to prevent continued stimulation of the second neuron which would cause repeated impulses to be sent. Synapses ensure that impulses only travel in one direction, avoiding confusion within the nervous system if impulses were traveling in both directions. As this is the only part of the nervous system where messages are chemical as opposed to electrical, it is the only place where drugs can act to affect the nervous system, e.g. this is where heroin works. How an impulse is passed on at a synapse. Exam tip. For maximum marks you will need to be able to understand the structure and functioning of a synapse and explain what happens at each step. 14.1.5 Sense organs. Sense organs as receptors. Receptors are groups of specialized cells. They detect a change in the environment and stimulate electrical impulses in response. Sense organs contain groups of receptors that respond to specific stimuli. Once the receptor cell in the sense organ has been stimulated, it generates an electrical impulse. This is passed onto a sensory neuron which carries the impulse to the central nervous system. Here a response will be decided on and the impulse will be passed to a motor neuron, via a relay neuron. The motor neuron carries the impulse to the effector, muscle or gland. The effector carries out the response. Structure and function of the eye. The eye is a sense organ containing receptor cells that are sensitive to light, rod cells, and color, cone cells. The eye. Function of the parts of the eye. The blind spot. At the point where the optic nerve joins the retina, there are no light-sensitive rod and cone cells on that part of the retina. Light falling onto that part of the retina will not result in an image being detected. The brain. Fills in. From surrounding light so we don't see a black hole where no light has fallen. This causes a blind spot, where we cannot detect an object in our peripheral vision even if it is there. The pupil reflex. This is a reflex action carried out to protect the retina from damage in bright light and protect us from not seeing objects in dim light. In dim light the pupil dilates, widens, in order to allow as much light into the eye as possible. In bright light the pupil constricts, narrows, in order to prevent too much light entering the eye and damaging the retina. The pupil reflex. In dim light, the pupil dilates, becomes larger, to allow more light to enter the eye to improve vision. In bright light, the pupil constricts, narrows, in order to prevent too much light entering the eye and damaging the retina. The pupil reflex. In dim light, the pupil dilates, becomes larger, to allow more light to enter the eye to improve vision. In bright light, the pupil constricts, gets smaller, to allow less light to enter the eye to protect the retina from damage. Did this video help you? Yes. No. The pupil reflex, antagonistic muscle action, extended. The pupil reflex is an example of a pair of antagonistic muscle groups acting together. They work together to regulate the amount of light entering the eye. The muscles that work antagonistically are the radial muscles and the circular muscles of the eye. When one set of muscles contracts, the other relaxes. The pupil reflex in dim light. The pupil reflex in bright light. Responding to changes in light intensity table. Accommodation. Extended. Accommodation. The function of the eye in focusing on near and distant objects. The way the lens brings about fine focusing is called accommodation. The lens is elastic and its shape can be changed when the suspensory ligaments attached to it become tight or loose. The changes are brought about by the contraction or relaxation of the ciliary muscles. When an object is close up, the ciliary muscles contract, the ring of muscle decreases in diameter. This causes the suspensory ligaments to loosen. This stops the suspensory ligaments from pulling on the lens, which allows the lens to become fatter. Light is refracted more. Diagram showing the eye when an object is close up. When an object is far away, the ciliary muscles relax, the ring of muscle increases in diameter. This causes the suspensory ligaments to tighten. The suspensory ligaments pull on the lens, causing it to become thinner. Light is refracted less. 
Diagram showing the eye when an object is far away. Focusing on distant and near objects table. Exam tip. The focusing of the eye on distant and near objects is complex and it can be hard to remember what is happening. This is something you can work out in an exam if you have forgotten. Staring at your hand right in front of your eye will make your eyes feel tight and tired after a few seconds. This is because the ciliary muscles are contracted. Staring at an object far away feels relaxing and comfortable because the ciliary muscles are relaxed. Rod and cone cells, extended. There are two types of receptor cells in the retina. Rods, which are sensitive to dim light. Cones, which distinguish between different colors in bright light. There are three types of cone cells which are sensitive to different colors of light, red, blue and green. The fovea is an area on the retina where almost all of the cone cells are found. Rod cells are found all over the retina, other than the area where the optic nerve attaches to the retina. There are no light-sensitive cells at all in this area, and so it is known as the blind spot. Exam tip. Do you ever wonder why your night vision is black and white? It's because the low light intensity isn't enough to stimulate cone cells, so only rod cells are stimulated. Remember, only the cone cells can detect color. Also, if you look directly at a dim star at night, it disappears, but reappears if you look slightly to one side of it. Never look directly at the sun. This is because, when looking straight at the star, the light falls on the fovea, which has more cones so fewer rods, so the low light intensity won't be enough to stimulate the rods. Looking slightly off to the side allows the light to fall away from the fovea, onto more rod cells, so the star reappears in your peripheral, ed. Vision. 14.1.7 Hormones in Humans. Hormones and their associated glands. What is a hormone? A hormone is a chemical substance produced by a gland and carried by the blood. The hormone alters the activity of one or more specific target organs i.e. they are chemicals which transmit information from one part of the organism to another and bring about a change. The glands that produce hormones in animals are known collectively as the endocrine system. The major endocrine glands in the body. Transport around the body. Endocrine glands have a good blood supply as when they make hormones they need to get them into the bloodstream, specifically the blood plasma, as soon as possible so they can travel around the body to the target organs to bring about the response. Hormones only affect cells with target receptors that the hormone can bind to. These are either found on the cell membrane, or inside cells. Receptors have to be complementary to hormones for there to be an effect. The liver regulates levels of hormones in the blood transforming or breaking down any that are in excess. How hormones work. Important hormones in the human body. Comparison of nervous and hormonal control. Glucagon. Extended. Blood glucose levels are controlled by a negative feedback mechanism involving the production of two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Both hormones which control blood glucose concentration are made in the pancreas. Insulin is produced when blood glucose rises and stimulates liver and muscle cells to convert excess glucose into glycogen to be stored. Glucagon is produced when blood glucose falls and stimulates liver and muscle cells to convert stored glycogen into glucose to be released into the blood. Negative feedback regulation of blood glucose levels. Exam tip. The terms glucagon and glycogen are very often mixed up by students as they sound similar. Remember. Glucagon is the hormone. Glycogen is the polysaccharide glucose is stored as. Learn the differences between the spellings and what each one does so you do not get confused in the exam. Did this video help you? Yes. No. The hormone adrenaline. Adrenaline is known as the fight or flight hormone as it is produced in situations where the body may be in danger. Flight equals remove oneself rapidly from a dangerous situation e.g. run away. Fight equals if flight is not possible, resort to physical combat to overcome danger. It causes a range of different things to happen in the body, all designed to prepare it for movement, i.e. fight or flight. These include, increasing blood glucose concentration for increased respiration in muscle cells. Increasing pulse rate and breathing rate so glucose and oxygen can be delivered to muscle cells, and carbon dioxide taken away, from muscle cells more quickly. Diverting blood flow towards muscles and away from non-essential parts of the body such as the alimentary canal. 
again to ensure the reactants of respiration are as available as possible. Dilating pupils to allow as much light as possible to reach the retina so more information can be sent to the brain. Exam tip. It is worth learning this list of effects of adrenaline as it is a fairly common exam question and can be worth several easy marks. More on adrenaline, extended. More on adrenaline, extended. Additional effects of adrenaline include increasing the concentration of glucose in the blood. This helps deliver more important glucose to muscles for respiration. Increasing heart rate. This has the same effect to ensure that all muscles are well prepared for high levels of activity in a flight or fight situation.